Hello, and welcome to the Healing Waters broadcast. I am your host, Marie Kennedy Groves, and I am thrilled that you have joined me today. So, a little bit about myself. I am a mom of two amazing kids, a glam mom to an amazing five-year-old, and you know, people always say, so Marie, tell me about yourself. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love my life. I have created an amazing life that I am so proud to share with you. I have, it, it's, I, I've been through a lot of things in my life that I have chosen to grow from. I have, I know what it is to be at the bottom. I know what it is to fight your way back. And I know what it is to live your life without peace. But today, let me tell you, I have fought my way back through a lot of things. I have peace. I have pure joy. And what I mean by that is for no particular reason. I just love my life. I am the creator of amazing life experiences. I'm very intentional on a day-to-day -day basis of what I think about and what I do with the end result in mind. I am a life coach. I have an entrepreneurial spirit. So I have different businesses that I'm involved in. I love it all. I love it all. When I lay my head on my pillow at night, Many times I'm, I'm, you know, exhausted from my day, but I will lay there and I'll say, what would you give up that you experienced today? And the truth of the matter is, I can't come up with one thing that I would give up in my life right now. So I... I do all of this powered by God, and I am here to encourage you that you can fight your way back to, that you can have peace in your life. Do not settle for anything less. I am a big person. You will hear me talk a lot about doing the work continually doing the work and that is continually learning new new avenues new ways new putting new tools in our toolbox um to have emotional health to have spiritual health to have overall physical health to have financial health I want to be a well-rounded, healthy person. And so I am in constant, um, I, I, my mind is constantly open to new ways that I can be healthy on all the different home fronts. So with that being said, let me tell you a little bit about Healing Waters. You have tuned in today to the Healing Waters broadcast, and we are thrilled that you are here. Let me explain something about this broadcast. It is raw, real, and relevant. It's non, it's just not scripted. It is real life topics. It's talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly, and just being honest about it all. We have been doing a relationship series on um, relationship. And I will say that this broadcast, I speak um, to women, although a lot of the things that I share 
can be for men as well. But a lot of times I will speak about like in relationship right now, I've been talking about dating and dating men and how to bet men. And so when you hear me talk like that, yes, it can definitely go both ways. But for this broadcast, I do speak mostly to the women. So the series that we have been doing is what I wish I'd been taught about dating. And you can go back and listen to the, the prior um, episodes. But today, we are on number six of what I wish I had been taught about dating. So number one was how to love myself. We did a deep dive in how to love ourselves. And again, it, it was not about getting your hair done. It was not about the right makeup. It was, it was a how to love ourselves internally. Um, the second one was how to bet men. You want to go back and catch that one. Then the third one was how to walk away from BS faster. And the fourth one was how to have the hard conversations. And then number five was how to trust my inner knowing. And we did deep dives into all of those. And I... I love having these conversations because I wish so much that someone would have had these with me many, 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 many years ago. So, you know, if you're young and you're just in that dating mode, um, hey, I'm your auntie. <laughs> you can call me Aunt Marie. Um, I can be your sister i can be hey i can be whatever you need me to be if you are single again and back out there in the crazy dating world and trying to figure this out go back and listen to this this is how i have been over the past almost 11 years is <laughs> i've been a single mom for almost 11 years. And in this crazy dating world, and it is so different in today's time. Um, and it is also very different when you're dating and you have kids. So there's just a lot of, of things around that that are really, really important that we need to have conversations about. Because it, is, because it is very lonely out there. Um, there's so many things that you need to look out for now that we never thought about 20, 30 years ago. Um, so today our topic is what's really important in a man. So we are going to take a short commercial break. And we will be right back. And we are back. Okay. Our topic today is... What's really important in a man? So, I know we all have our types. And it is easy to say, oh, you know, I want tall, dark, and handsome. You know, I they need to be over six foot tall, and they need to make six figures a year, and they need whatever, whatever your your scenario is. I understand. I, 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 
I am a life coach, but I have a life coach. And one of the things that she always says is that everybody has a type. And she said, I don't care if you're short, tall, overweight, skinny, freckles, blonde, uh, brunette. I, I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. You are going to do it for the right person. Like just the way you are is going to be everything for the right person. For the wrong person, they're going to want to change you or they're going to want, a, and this is what I have learned. And even for, for me and for you, when you're out there in the dating arena and you're going on dates, and if you're sitting there across the table from someone um, or you're having a conversation with someone and you're like, oh, wow, you know, they have this and this and they're really great, but I really wish I could change this. Mm -hmm. Walk away. If you're already thinking about the things that you wish they were not or the things that you want to change, they're not for you. They're not for you. Um, so let me be very clear on that. Never tolerate a relationship that you feel like, oh, well, you know, as we go along, I may be able to, you know, get them to do this. Now, will people change as time progresses? Absolutely, you'll change. And you can make each other better, but make sure that if they never change, that you're okay, not just okay, you're good with who they are right now. The biggest things that I will tell you um, never to settle on ever in life are the big things that really matter. And I'm going to talk about those things today, those things that really at the end of the day matter. Looks really don't matter. What they drive really doesn't matter. I mean, there's a, just, there's so much stuff that doesn't matter. But let me tell you what matters. And this will make or break the longevity of a relationship. So this is something that I wished I had been taught about dating and, and vetting men and looking, um, looking at men um, for, through these lenses, okay? Integrity with others. What's their integrity like with others? Are they, are they respected? in their work world? Are they respected with their peers? Or is there always drama going on? And, and you know, they're always talking about, you know, oh, you know, this person did that and this person did that and I'm so mad at this and they're mad at me and blah, 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 blah. Okay, issues. There's an integrity respect piece that is lacking in that person if they're always fighting and having issues with their peers. And look at their, their relationship with their friends, who they count as friends. What's their integrity when they're out with their friends? What's their friend's integrity? If they're hanging out with the boys and the boys have no integrity and they're out having a good time and flirting and running around with women and all the other stuff. Maybe the guy you're dating is not doing that, but that's who he hangs with. Red flag, red flag. It will only be a matter of time before he joins them there because there's no integrity. And 
when you hang out with people that lack integrity, you will watch that and, and it's very easy to become convinced that you're missing out on something. Just saying. Work ethic. What is their work ethic? Do they, do, do they lay around all the time and there's no motivation? Or are they, are, are they, and here's the thing. And I've told my boyfriend this so many times. I don't need you to be a millionaire. I don't need you to be a millionaire. We can build a legacy together. But I need you to have vision. And I need you to have goals and intentions on where you're going. We've all been through hard times financially. I've been at the bottom financially. I've done extremely well in my life. I've lost it all. I've been all over the board. So I don't judge people that are all over the board. I don't. But what I'm going to look for is, and, and my boyfriend and I have talked about this, what have you learned through those times? How are you building back differently? I want somebody to build with. We can become, we can, we can build a legacy together. But do you have the mindset of rebuilding better, faster than you ever have before? What's your work ethic? What are you willing to sacrifice? The other thing that is huge is vulnerability. Now, in this day and time, it is very, very difficult for men to feel safe being vulnerable. And if you think back to how we raise men, boys, when they cry, when they show emotion, they're told to man up, that, that, that men can't, you know, are not supposed to show emotion like that. What's your problem? You're being a baby, it, all the stuff. So they're taught not to be vulnerable. They're taught not to show emotion. If they have been in a relationship, relationships prior to you, where they have been vulnerable, but the their what they thought was a safe place, that previous relationships have scorned them for sharing their feelings or dismissed what they were feeling. This is a pain point and they have learned to shut down and say, nope, no more, not ever again. Now, this is very relevant in today's time, especially if you are dating and you're over 30. <laughs> if you're over 30 and dating, the likelihood of, uh, dating men that have been hurt in other relationships and have shut down is 99.9% relevant. So we as women have got to be very careful that yes, we want our men to be vulnerable and to share their feelings with us. But the other thing that we also have to do is not score in them when they do open up. We have to be able to listen. We have to be able to respond appropriately. So vulnerability, and, and here's the deal. If, if, if you meet someone that is amazing, but you're having a really hard time getting them to open up and be vulnerable with you. See if they are willing to, I mean, if you're at that point in, in, in your relationship where, you know, you really feel like there's potential and he really feels like there's potential, but this is a, a sticky point for you, communication, vulnerability. See if they are willing to do counseling. See if they are willing 
to do couples counseling where you can you can go find a safe place to have these conversations. Um, and you can you can learn how to listen. He can learn how to open up. Um, if they're not willing to do counseling around that, huge red flag. This is always going to be an issue. Always going to be an issue if they're not willing to do the work. Um, admitting being wrong. Oh my gosh. If, if you are dating someone and something happens in your relationship and you or them can't admit if that you were wrong, huge red flag. This is what really is important in a man. And, and, and this is, hey, if you're just getting to know this person and you're trying to vet this person, this goes back to the, the episode that we did on vetting men. But if you're having a conversation and they're talking about past relationships and everything that the woman did wrong and she did this and blah, blah, blah. And if she hadn't done this rah, 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 and never taking responsibility for their part of the issues in the relationship, huge red flag, huge. And same to you. If you're always blaming your ex, whether it's ex-boyfriend, ex-husband, whatever, for all the issues in the relationship, and you're not taking any of the responsibility, you need to do the work around that. Because I don't care what a piece of crap <laughs> your prior relation or, uh, partner was, you contributed in some way, shape, or form. You and I are not perfect. Own your ish. Own it. It is healing and it is healthy. And then... Are they willing to always progressively doing the work? Like when an issue comes up in your relationship or, or you're talking about something and an issue pops up, are they willing to do the work around that? Or do they just shut down and they're like, mm, I'm done, can't do this. I love, love, love my relationship that I have been in for over a year now. We are constantly doing the work. This is the only relationship that I have ever experienced in over 50 years that I can say, I do a lot of um, relationship um I listen to a lot of podcasts around relationship and in just this week, I had, well, a couple of weeks ago, I had come across this podcast um, on relationships that I just thought was so good. And my boyfriend and I had some windshield time and I said to him, Hey, I ran across this podcast that about relationships that I just thought was really good. And I would love for us to listen to it together so that we can talk around some of the issues that they talked about. And he said, sure, I, I'm good with that. We turned on this podcast and we got out a notebook and pen. And as the, we listened to the podcast, we took notes on the things that we wanted to go back and circle back around and talk about. That's doing the work, people. That's, you may say, what does that look like? What? We are not willing to shove anything under the rug, any issue under the rug. We're not willing to do it. We're going to talk about it. And if we can't figure it out, we have already made the commitment that anything that we cannot work through together, that we love each other enough that we will go to counseling. We will seek outside help to make sure 
that our relationship stays strong and that nothing is shoved under the rug. I have lived the majority of my life, I have lived with pushing things under the rug. And I am no, no, I'm not willing to do that in the second half of my life. So what's really important in a man? Integrity, work ethic, vulnerability, admitting that they're, you know, when they've been wrong. Um, and just progressively working on themselves. And the same to you. All of these things are important to you. So maybe you're not in a relationship right now, but you would love to be. Start working on these things in yourself and watch how you attract that in men. Okay. We have run out of time. This series on relationship has... I have enjoyed sharing my thoughts with you so very much. It has been healing for me just to share with you what I've learned. I pray that you have gotten just some hope, some tips, some tools that you can go out and make a difference in your relationships, in your life, because you've been a part of these episodes. I hope you all have a wonderful day wherever you are at all over the world. If you would like to connect with me, I am Marie Groves on Facebook. I am world underscore changer, the number four life on Instagram. Or you can email me at marie.groves at healingwaters.org. Okay. I, I'm sorry, at healingwaters.info, not .org. <laughs> um, so Mar and there's no dot in Marie. I have too many emails going on. Marie Groves at healingwaters.info. That's where you can email me at. All right. Subscribe, never miss an episode. And we hope that you have a wonderful day wherever you are at. Take care and we'll talk soon.